Well, you need to acknowledge any speed restriction below 80 kilometers an hour, and I think 80 and 90, as long as you're within 20% of them, you don't have to acknowledge them, but if you're above 20%, you have to acknowledge and slow down. Yep, it doesn't hurt. 5029, have your hand on the magnet, on the button, just in head, just in case. Driver, due to unit shortage this morning, you are an extra service. Please go as empty stock to Strood, and then work to booked service to Maidstone West. You've been given the okay to depart. Please remember you may have to set your own points in the carriage sidings. Where am I then? I'm over here. Set the points. Uh, change the slip. Set that one. Excellent. Hey there, WUT. To some extent, too, it depends on what uh, what else is happening. So if you go over, um, if you acknowledge for a, a thousand hertz, then it, if you're PDB O, then you drop to 85 kmh. If you are PDB M, you drop to 75, I think 70. And if you're uh, PCB U, then you drop to 55, I think. Um, when you get to the red light, or the, sorry, the 500 hertz, if you are in restricted monitoring, then you must always drop, I think, to 25 kmh. Uh, be at 25 before you get to the 500 hertz. Um, and if you're not in restricted monitoring, then if you're in PCB O, you go. You must be at 65 before you hit it and drop to 45. If you are PCB M, it's 45 to 25, I think, or 55 35, and then PCB U is 45 25. I think. I'm struggling. Uh, 500 hertz always follows 1000 in 99% of cases. It's quite rare that it doesn't, but it's not impossible. But yeah, in, in just about all cases, it does. I think 500 hertz happens on any speed restriction, which is so if you go through a TSR and the TSR is sort of 20 kilometers an hour or something, then um, well, I should probably set my points, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, you set, if you go through a speed restriction, it's like a 20 kilometers an hour speed restriction, you'll get an immediate 500 hertz as you go through it. Because it's so slow. Yeah, you know what, Amar, if I can figure it out, anyone can figure it out. See, now I have to think really carefully because I'm used to the German route I just did where the signal's on the right. Actually, I want the one on the left. The thing is, it's mostly practice because you only have to remember the the bits for PZBO or M or U, the one that you're driving, you don't have to remember all of it. So it's only actually you to, the knowledge you need for a particular train is is a third of that. And then it's just a question of well, am I in restricted monitoring or not? If I'm not in restricted monitoring at the moment, I'm going to go over. Then then the rules are one thing, and if I am, they're different. Well, they're just like distance coolout wing. We've got them in the UK, essentially. They're, you've got repeaters, pre-signals, and main signals, I think. So repeaters literally just repeat an aspect, and then the other ones you've got a distance, which are the ones that sort of you get double yellow instead of a, in front of a red.
this epic BR Blue hype. Why is it measured in height? Uh, in hertz? Because um, oh, we're going to uh, strewed. Uh, because of the frequency of the um, the pulse that it um, communicates in. Blue and white checkered square signal. I want to post a photograph, an image of one, like being kid. Well, they're, ele they're electro no, electromagnetic Belize's, so I think they've got magnetic properties, WT. Belize is the correct term for it. Everybody look away, look back again. Marshal, to, to complete a marshal instruction, you have to deliver all of the cars to a particular siding and uncouple them in that siding. Yeah, unfortunately, BRCW, it's actually a core engine thing. It's not a, um, a root problem. Sometimes the um, transparency decals just don't render. Going past Rochester Old. Light? What light? This is an old British train. They don't have lights on the front. I mean, seriously. Like, you know, what light?
Rochester New. That is what there is pretty much left on that station, BRCW. It's the plat empty platforms and rubble. Coming up to Strood next. steep downhill, got the 20 limit, 15 at the bottom. Robert Murlock, it adds an additional route, which effectively includes Chatham Mainline as well. Doesn't replace it, that'll still be there. Any scenarios and things you've got will be there. And they'll be on the original Chatham Mainline route, they won't suddenly move over. It literally is just a second route that gets added. Speed drop down. So at the back of the train there is the red the red things. Fifteen at the bottom. There you go, that's the route. This is, so this is the Medway Valley lines. So we now head down to Maidstone West, heading down following the parcel train, uh, following that one. Any more junction? Change cabs again. There's an intermittent fault on this signal. You may have to press tab to pass. Good. 
should be somewhere up here. There's a crossover. Buxton next. Gilmere, all the rail mishaps. Yeah, there seems to be a, a bit of a spate of them at the moment, don't they? You wouldn't want to be the boss of Amtrak at the moment. You must be going to bed expecting to be woken up. So I don't know, I think it's just, obviously it's just coincidence, but it is unfortunate because it just puts paints the rail, uh, the railroad in a poor light. So X-Series Gamer, they are marketplace packs. Um, I wrote that text. Um, because marketplace packs essentially have dependencies. You have to buy the thing it's a reskin for, and the, the pack itself won't work without the reskin, um, without the original thing it's a reskin of. Um, if you buy it through the internal store in the game, then it will, pre it will prevent you from buying something it won't work. Whereas Steam can't do that. So essentially it's, if you buy it through the game, then if it lets you buy it, you're good. But if you um, buy it in Steam, I mean they should all be visible on Steam, but they're just less obvious. If you search for them, they should all be there. I've seen that as well, um, Hagseek. It was one. There was one recently. I think it was the one where the um, coaches separated, and they led with. And this line doesn't have PTC. It is unclear if PTC would have helped this. No, it wouldn't have. Shut up about PTC. <laughs> PTC will not cure everything, but it will. It is. It's a good thing, but. Which one was the South Carolina one, Axie? But that's always been the case, hasn't it, BRCW? There's nothing new about that. Oh yes, okay, Gilmy, that's the one where the um, the train, the it looks like the switch, the freight op engineer or freight conductor left the main switched into the siding, and the Amtrak went and hit the um, freight train at 50 or something like that. Big Mama Hanky, love trains. Thanks for the game. You're more than welcome. Thank you very much indeed, Big Mama Hanky. Really appreciate that chair donation. Right, we're off to via Halling. We're not going to stop there. Instead, it happened because of the PTC install process. Indeed, yeah. Well, it's not PTC that caused it. 
that's that's just wet wear. Humans are fallible. The point of most railways is, is is to have processes that prevent that kind of thing from happening. And presumably there's a process failed somewhere on that one. I think from what I understood it. Oh Gilmere, ninth month. Hey there Matt, keep up the excellent streaming. Really appreciate it, Gilmere. Hey, no worry, Robert Merlo, no worry. As long as you're enjoying the stream, that's all that matters. Signals were off, so PTC could be installed. So I assume they were on warrants or something. Seems to have been a miscommunication somewhere, anyway. Uh, so we're going via Halling, go via Snobland, sorry, Amaran, uh, to New Hive. Anything interesting in it, tenants, am I? Positive train control queue light wing effectively means that trains will, um, pos will, instead of, it takes control of the train to slow it down if the engineer doesn't. So if you're running too fast around on speeds, on track, uh, the speed limit, so if you're exceeding the speed limit, or if you're approaching a temporary speed restriction then it will force you to slow the train down and penalty brake you if you don't slow down at the right speed. So it's kind of like... It's a more dynamic version of PZB, I guess. So one good, one good example, I think, of where PTC um, makes a big difference, and makes a big difference everywhere, is that, um, so Metro North on the New York New Haven line, they run ATC. Um, the ATC um, will limit engineers based on signals, but if they're running to a green signal, they can run any speed they like. Um, and there was, an, there was a spate of instance on Metro North and uh, where they were, just were going too fast around. There's a couple of curves that are quite sharp and they reduced the speed on them. And so they were um, cutting the... Uh, and so basically the idea was that you put PTC on there, then all of a sudden the engineers are also then guided by the um, system to reduce their speed accordingly as well. Hence why the ruin thinks PTC will will solve all problems. So, well, it's solves some problems. New Hive. Just talking pizza and me everywhere. There you go, we've got a solution. An LZB somewhere. P LZB is, prob is probably closer to PTC, to be honest. Although PZB is a positive train control. But the other thing, Eggseek, is remember that, I mean, PZB prevents an awful lot of types of accidents. It, I mean, it's a very, very good system. Even if it's more complex to understand for the layman, it's a very competent system. But it still has problems. There was that accident away a couple of years ago in Germany that should have been prevented by PZB, but turned out PZB wasn't on.
Hey, Tyrant. Indeed, train sim guy. Wrecking tonight. Oh, hello. Something fun's happening. <clears throat> that separation, that thing there actually happens any on any train. As soon as the train separated, the air brakes would have come apart, which meant that all of a sudden the um, um, brake pipes would have emptied in pressure when all the brakes would have come on. I mean, that's that's how standard American air brakes work anyway. So if you're driving a, a two mile long freight train and one of the brake pipes snaps, the entire both halves will come to a uh, will come to a stop. It's a fail safe system. Well, I guess by mechanical failure, they mean the um, the coupler broke. That doesn't surprise me, Emma. Any safety critical system is going to have massive costs. That's pretty much what I'd expect, Peter. If you, but the brakes would have applied to full service, um, in pretty much instantly. That's awesome. Is it Peachlick? Okay, I must admit, I was thinking I would have expected both halves of the freight train splitting to stop pretty much, um, except for the fact that no freight train likes to have its emergency brakes applied. That generally is not a good thing. Go by Aylesford. Uh, to Maidstone Barracks and then on to Maidstone West. Just saw that 40 coming up there, so it's me rocketing away thinking, yeah, we're not stopping here. Hey, Master Forge, welcome back. <clears throat> oh, that's a good point, Ed, yeah. Yeah, the front half will stop a lot quicker if it's shorter.
It shouldn't be the, the the amount of time it takes to empty the pipe piece loop shouldn't really affect too much because um, emergency brakes are set, are set to trigger on a rapid change in pressure. So even if if you get if you drop two or three psi on the brake pipe. Um, and you do it too quickly, that triggers an emergency brake. So you don't have to wait for the whole thing to go down, but you only have to wait for it to go down a bit, but quickly, which is kind of what would happen. But the extra weight of that train is what will take it, you know, if you've got 10 wagons and 90 wagons, the 10's gonna stop pretty quickly and the 90's gonna run it over. I haven't broken the speed limit so far, BRCW. For a change. I nearly did just then. Uh, well, 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 look, yes, it's um, breakfast. There you go, Moggy. Two of them. Maidstone Barracks. Next stop, Maidstone Barracks. You haven't seen it yet, Robert Murloc. Oh my word. So much fun. Red bus, this has been a cracking scenario, really good. Really, really good. The idea of starting at um, Gillingham, driving out to Strew, changing ends, the two or three bits of changing ends have been really interesting, that doesn't get done an awful lot. When I code, do I listen to music? It depends. If I'm spamming out code, because what I've got to do is, I figure, you know, like if I'm doing boilerplate object uh, object stuff, then I'll put on some high beat rate dance music or something. Um, but otherwise, and generally, no, I don't listen to anything because it distracts me. You've had a thing at work come up down to my no, that's bad news. No, not K-pop, Robert Murdoch. I'm just trying to think of the kind of thing that it would have been. Who is it did the song Trilenium? I think it was that.
do other people in the office put music on when coding? Yeah. Oh yeah, coders, the artists, they quite often put music on. No, my kids are into K-pop though, Robert. Robot. Six two five zero. No, I don't do any coding these days. Except when I'm at home. It's never been part of my role to do coding. I've occasionally sneaked a bit of coding in to fix problems or change something on TS1 and managed to sneak it out, but... Is that, a, is that a broken old Mark 1 down there? Let's go and have a look. Oh no, it's a normal one. I thought for a minute it was one of the ones from the Doncaster pack. Yeah, I'm pretty much, for, for the most part, BRCW, I'm exactly the same. I need, uh, if necessary, I put my headphones on. Because <laughs> people are less likely to interrupt me if you've got your headphones on. Uh, and it's also more plausible to ignore them, because you can pretend you can't hear them. <clears throat> giving all my secrets away um, and um, yeah you can um, you can get on um, but like I said sometimes if I know I've got to create a, like you know 100 200 objects to get a uh, base classes interfaces um, implementations and all the rest of it without even without code and it's just a load of old boilerplate I can spam through that really quickly if I've got um, some like some good sounds playing So lots of Gangnam style. No, they like um, BTS. I think it is. I mean, like the same song over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. I don't think you get a 416 numbered 5759, because then it'd be a 415. Well, no driver, the next driver is here to work this service forward. Must now be tea time. I missed a follow. Oh, Flyboy Vinky, thank you for the follow. Right, that was really good, Red Bus. Great work. Right, what's next? Stopper to the coal mines. How much time is spent coding, how much is bug fixing? I can't remember. I mean, there's a fairly standard amount that any coder will spend. Spending lots of time bug fixing doesn't necessarily mean they're a bad programmer either. It means that, because um, the stand, you know, any amount of code is going to have problems with it because of the complexity of it. Long is the working day for British engineers, uh, Master Forge. When you say engineers, typical. Do you mean uh, software engineers or do you mean tr um, train drivers? Okay, go away, game. Go away. Get on the it Crash. Bye, bye. Oh, poop. Yeah, I know, but we've just been talking about software programmers, and so I didn't know whether or not you were talking about software engineers or whether you were talking about uh, railroad engineers. Um, it depends. I think they work um, generally. They work shifts, some days on, some days off. Essentially, I turned my settings back up a bit, Ayrton, which is why I said it's crashing a bit more often. <laughs> 